Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Uncommon Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, Antasia Maddox, and thank you so much for joining me for episode seven of season two. Um, so let's just get into our check-in this week. So this week is so much better than last week. I can honestly say that. I'm feeling more organized. Um, I've gotten some things taken care of that I needed to take care of. So that's been good. Um, I feel okay. I'm a little bit tired, if I'm being honest, but overall, I feel great and things are good. Um, I spent some time with my family. So that was nice um, for a cousin's birthday. And yeah, that's about it this week. Everything has been good. Oh, one thing I did want to mention, I don't know if you guys are into movies or what kind of movies you watch, but I recently, a little while from when I'm recording this, have I saw Cruella and I think everybody should see it. It's such a good movie. It's, it's like exciting. The fashions in the movie are incredible. So much that I even looked up who the fashion designer was for um, Cruella. They're phenomenal. So the storyline is really good. It's really exciting. And I, I know it's on Disney Plus, but I don't really think it's a kid's movie. Um, just like the themes of it. And like, I don't think, well, again, I don't know. Let me not assume what somebody's child will understand, but it just seems a little more advanced um, than for kids. It seems like an adult movie for sure. So I don't know if that matters to anybody out there. If you're considering having your kids watch, I don't think it would be like too much like traumatizing for them. They just might not be as interested because they might not understand the themes of the, the movie, but it's really good if you have not seen it. So I would advise people to check that out if you, um, like Disney movies, or even if you don't, it's a really good, it's a really good movie. So for this week, for our current or off topic thought, um, I was thinking about just how, even like in these last couple of weeks, I told you guys a lot of things have come up, some very frustrating things, and um, just how dif difficult it is to um, jump into things and not know what to expect and not know what to do. And even I was talking to someone recently about taxes because he also um, doesn't get like a standard W-2, so he works for himself, so he has to file taxes, but he hasn't filed taxes in like the last three years, and he was telling me how terrified he was because he's like, oh, I think I'm going to go to jail, and I'm like, I don't think it quite <laughs> works that way. Will they penalize you? Absolutely, so you might have to pay a whole lot of fees for not filing, but it doesn't mean that you're like going to be arrested or anything like that, and like, I think sometimes we, um, make things such a big catastrophe before anything happens like we let anxiety just overwhelm us and all these possibilities of what could go wrong and in reality sometimes if we just do the thing it's not as bad or um as uh scary as what we thought it would be and i just thought about that because i experience the same thing sometimes i mean of course i think most of us do but i think sometimes we just need to let go of what that fear is and just let whatever's going to happen happen and deal with it as it comes. You know, um, even like I said, dealing with the things that have come up for me was very frustrating, very overwhelming um, to say the least. But at the end of the day, I deal with it and I have to move on. And like, it's just that these are the cards that I've been dealt in this moment. So I do my best. And, you know, that's just something I was sharing with him. And I want to share with you guys too. That I think sometimes we can just be so concerned with how bad things can be that we allow things to get worse because we don't take any action at all. Like for instance, like I was saying, I was talking to him and it's been three years, sir. This, this is going to catch up with you at some point when you actually do file. And then that's gonna be a ton more money than if you had just taken care of it in the first place and not been so afraid. So that was just something I was thinking about uh, recently that is not on topic for this week, but I thought that it was, um, something worth mentioning. So um, we typically have questions, but this week we did not have a question. This is the first time in a while. So if you guys do have any questions, thoughts, comments, any of those things, please feel free um, to send them to un uncommon questions, sorry, one at gmail.com. You can send them in our Facebook group. You can send them um, on YouTube or you can send them to me if you have my phone number. So yes. So with that, since we do not have a question this week, um, I will get straight into the topic. So so this week, I want to talk about a book that I listened to slash read. I'm called The Big Leap. The Big Leap. Why can't I talk today? <laughs> By Gay Hendricks. And um, it's such a good book. Like, I, I recommend everybody read it. And I think that it applies to anybody, regardless of how um, well you think you're doing. Like, the book is just really... Um, it just highlights some things about us that, you know, we might need to acknowledge. So essentially the book is about dealing with your internal 
barriers, right? Like whatever keeps you from living in your fullest potential, whatever keeps you from living in your zone of genius, as he talks about in this book and how a lot of times, and granted, he even mentions it, like a lot of the stuff is like set in childhood, like many things like we talk about in this podcast. And like, I think other people talk about, like, I think people underestimate how pivotal and, um, you know, childhood is our foundation, right? And like a lot of times we, we believe, we have certain beliefs about ourselves, certain beliefs about the world that are just set in stone, even sometimes subconsciously. So we have this belief and then we go through the world and don't even really recognize it. So this book kind of highlights some of those things and how having certain internal beliefs can prevent us from living in our fullest potential. So um, he talks about these different zones, right? So these zones are essentially how you function in the world. And this could be within relationships. A lot of times it's like more sort of geared towards um, professional or even like in love, any, any areas, right? So I can't remember what the very bottom level, but essentially that you're not good at this thing at all. Um, zone of competence is that you kind of get it, you can manage and it's fine zone of excellence you do well at this it's not your absolute um fullest potential it's not the thing that gives you the most joy but you're good at it and then your zone of genius the thing you are uniquely suited to do first of all doesn't that sound amazing like you you are uniquely suited to do this thing right and oftentimes people don't live in their zone of genius regardless of money because he even talks about how he works with he has worked with people who are millionaires and you know, have all of this um, financial things that to prove like, oh, see, I'm so successful. Like you have these houses, you have these things, but those people still aren't living in their zone of genius. And those, the reasons for that happening are, you know, lists of reasons, but he did come up with um, a list of like buckets, so to speak, that the typical reasons that <clears throat> people can have upper limit problems. So the, the upper limit, what he described as the upper limit problems are the things that prevent you from reaching your um, zone of genius. The things that prevent you, like if it's um, some type of fear you have around things, um, as far as like, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to be too successful. And, and again, like sometimes people wouldn't say this stuff out loud, but their behavior kind of shows you that that's how, or it maybe even shows themselves, that's how they feel. Like there's a barrier between what they want and what they think they can attain. Like there's often fear in between those two things or the fear of um, acting out some unrealistic or exaggerated belief system that we have. So some of those boxes are feeling fundamentally flawed. Essentially, I think that one's straightforward. Like feel like you're not good enough. Feel like you can't possibly um, compete with people in this realm, feeling like you will never be able to attain a certain amount of wealth, feeling like it's so out of your reach and so far from where you are that you, that is your upper limit problem that because you have this belief, you don't even really try or put forth effort. Um, disloyalty and abandonment, this idea that you'll be leaving people behind essentially, um, or that you won't fit into your group anymore. This one I resonate with quite a bit, I think. Um, and believing that people will automatically think that you're better or things like that. Um, believing that that the more sex you have, the more success you have um, makes you a bigger burden. And this one is more like, okay, if I have all of this money, how will I be able to take care? care of it. I won't be able to maintain this lifestyle. I'll just lose it all. Those kinds of things like that. It will be more of an issue to have the success than to not, because you won't be able to handle, you won't be able to manage. And again, these things might display differently in different people, but that's kind of the sense of what they're talking about. And then the, uh, the last one that he talks about is the crime of outshining, that if I for instance, like when you're young and you raise your hand and you know the answers or you look around the room and nobody else knows, that kind of fear of like, oh, I don't want to make people feel stupid. Like, I don't want people to think that I think I'm better than them or um, that they can't do things and that I'm so whatever, right? That fear of doing better than other people. So see, these are some of the things that he talks about as um, upper limits. And he also talks about writing these things down. And this is like in some of the... Um, how can I say, he does like like worksheets, essentially, we'll, we'll call them worksheets because I don't have another word for them. And this is one of the things that he suggests, like writing down your upper limits. And I'll actually link those below so that you guys can click on them and 
um, see them. And I think that's such a good idea to write them down. We talk about writing quite frequently um, on this podcast, but I think to be able to write something out, first of all, you can see it, right? And it gives something about writing things out gives a life and it makes it more tangible and real for you. And you can read it like, man, this is really something that I'm struggling with. And then once you've written down this limit, then you're able to be able to address it when things come up. You know, not that those thoughts might not creep in occasionally or that these things might not be a barrier for you immediately after you write it down, but it's just to bring awareness to the issue. So one of the other reasons I wanted to really bring up this book is because I, as you guys know, am, and I've shared just doing so many different things, right? And to be honest with you, it's like ideal for me. <laughs> like it is ideal for me to be able to work on my own, right? And to set the own tone for what I want to do, to be able to do multiple things. Like it is the best version of me when I can do a variety of things. Now, what does happen on the flip side of that, especially for now until things are more stable and settled, um, it requires more of my time, like busy all the time, whatever. And a lot of times these, my own upper limit problems or my beliefs, what I have for myself and what I believe of the world often trickle in, right? And like, oh, I am I could never attain whatever the fill in the blank is, right? Oh, I'm never going to have that much money. Oh, I'm never going to do these things. And even if these are fleeting thoughts, a lot of times, again, those subconscious thoughts will prevent you from doing the things that will propel you forward and get you to the places that you want to be. So in this book, he talks a lot about how you deal with those up limit problems and how you figure out what your zone of genius is, right? Like what is the thing that you are uniquely suited to do? You know, when was the last time you were like completely in, immersed in something and you lost hours because there was so much excitement and fulfillment behind it, you know? And I guess I can share one, one example for me that happened recently, which is kind of how I knew like, okay, well, we might be on the right path in this thing. Um, when I was creating the calendar that I, that I shared with you guys, I remember one night I was up until like probably six o'clock in the morning and I had been working for, for on this, on this stuff from like maybe 11, 10 or 11 the night before. Right. So all of that time I was just up working and I was so excited and I had so much energy. And I told you guys, this, this came right after I was saying that I struggled so much with trying to figure out like creativity, my next steps and like what I should be doing and like how I should be doing it. Because at that time, things had come up that were completely unexpected, which is life, right? But in those times for me specifically, it makes me think about, okay, so how do I adjust so that I'm better prepared next time? How do I adjust so I can really be um, living in the space that I want to be in, doing the things that I really want to be doing, things like that. So anyway, the calendar idea came out of that space. And once I was actually doing it, it, it made me think about other times in my life when like I was, I had that same energy and excitement, right? And all of those things are related to creativity. Every single time it has happened in my life, it's, it's when I've been the most creative and also the times where I've been the most um, receptive to something changing and doing something different and pushing pushing back on my fears, pushing back on the idea that like, oh, I can't possibly do this. I have to do this typical nine to five job or whatever the case may be. And I realized one of my own upper limit problems that I have is this fear of like, how will I be able to do all of these things that'll never work, right? And not just because um, I don't think I'm capable because also it's what I hear a lot of times. Like, oh, you have to pick a thing. You have to pick the one thing you're going to do or whatever. And I think those things are for every, different for everybody, um, whatever that is for you. But anyway, people always say these things to me with good intentions, right? People want me to do well. People want me to thrive and to be happy and all these kinds of things. But what happens internally is it's such a, it's, it's, there's so much friction because it's just not who I am. I'm not a person that, is going to just do one thing and that's it. I, I just, I struggle with it. I struggle and I'm, I'm, I'm super, unha I'm very unhappy when I'm trying to do that, right? Because that's just not who I am. That's not my zone of genius. My zone of genius is not doing one nine to five job where I'm serving people in this way and doing this thing. It's just not, it's not who I was built to be. That's just not who Antasia is, right? And that's okay. And uh, something about reading this book also, made me think about how critical it is for us not to be so consumed with 
what people say success is or what people perceive those things to be. And for us to define that within ourselves, right? And I thought about um, one of the other times where I was like the most excited, the happiest I've ever been in a job. I mentioned to you guys before, I worked at Clayton Barrel. Listen, I have never been more excited to go to a job, more happy about what I was doing, more like, oh, let me sign up to do this other thing because I'm so thrilled to see how it turns out. Like I was working in their merchandise and so I was like helping design displays and doing things like that, right? Stocking and whatever else. So I was on that. So we have to work really early, early in the morning, like stage the store and doing all of this stuff. And I had never been that happy and excited in my life on a flip of that. Cause this was like, right. I would say this was the last year of grad school is also the other thing that was happening. So I was in grad school, I was doing my internship and whatever, doing all of these things. But also I wasn't making a ton of money. Like it wasn't a very um, lucrative position by any means, but I was so happy, you know? And like um, going over this stuff, reading this book and like writing things out for myself really made me think about that and just how we view success, right? And how we view those things not granted. Let me be totally honest. I obviously I left that job because um, finances. I needed to get back to other things. I graduated, and all these things happened. So things had to shift. But what would have happened if I would have just leaned more into that area in, in that time instead of doing something different and being distracted and letting my upper limit problems and thoughts and issues prevent me? Right. So it made me think about like I'm sure. Again, I'm not the only one. He didn't write this book because Antasia is like this only person who's experiencing this right this happens across the board where we get so focused on um just making money while money obviously is important because we needed to live that's not that shouldn't be our main focus and it's not the end all be all which is why I ended up here in the first place right again I keep coming back to the same spot because at the end of the day I I don't fit into this box that I think sometimes is more typical, like this typical nine to five. Now, I think a lot of people's zone of genius fits nicely into that nine to five framework, which is nothing wrong with that. I don't know why we, um, everybody feels like it's such a terrible thing to work for somebody. We need people to work for somebody. We need that work to be done. And sometimes people are really amazing at it and there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. So this is not to say that there's a knock to it. It just isn't a good fit for me, right? And I, that I think, through doing this, through reading this book, through doing my own self-work, through just really examining the, 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 uh, the decisions that I've made um, or the decisions that I continue to make, it just makes me realize over and over and over again, if you keep coming back to the same spot, then you might need to just lean into that spot. But the reason I think a lot of times like myself or other people walk away from it or whatever, or get nervous is because it's scary, right? It's scary because this stuff can bring up the issues we have in, in this book where he talks about our upper limit problems or our upper limit um, mindset, right? We have these beliefs about ourselves that just aren't true because if they were true, I, I am also a believer that if something keeps coming to you, there's a reason for that. And I believe that we always figure it out. I believe we have the capacity to figure out things. If you desire to have a certain whatever, if you desire to do a public speaking event, whatever, I believe there's a way for you to do it. The things that we feel internally, the things that we feel in our core, I believe are all, always attainable for to us if we can get over our own fears. If we can get out of our own way and allow it to happen, I believe all of that stuff is attainable. Sometimes you might have to maneuver and do different things and try different stuff out equivalent to like I was just saying, the calendar. I hadn't planned to do that. Like I didn't know that would be the thing that came out of that creativity space when I was asking for it, but it did. And I'm grateful for it, right? Because it's now opened my mind up to so many different things that I didn't know that I would be excited about and other projects I'm working on that I'm super excited to share. But anyway, it, a lot of times if we just lean into it, what, what the thing that we say we're desiring, hey, I really want to have a storefront right? And I want the storefront to look a certain way and be a certain way or whatever. But you're so far from that storefront. Sometimes it can be scary. But instead of just letting the fear part happen, just like, hey, hey, I really want this storefront and just make little steps towards it. And believing that it's attainable, believing that your dreams are something that you can have and should have, right? So I think, again, shifting that mindset and figuring out why are the, re like, what are you, what are you afraid of? 
What's, what is the fear that's keeping you? And being honest about it. Sometimes it can be superficial. I just don't want to lose all of my money, right? And I think that's real. But I think the more honest we can be with ourselves, the more truthful we can be, the more we can actually deal with it and, and move forward. And that's why I love this book so much because it's just, it's just honest. It's an honest account of where you are. What do you need in this moment? What decisions have you been making? How can you do them differently? Um, and just really assessing them. And I think there's some comfort in maybe knowing that people, that you're not alone. You know, I think sometimes I get very um, in my head about it. And, and, and a lot of it is because I'm not around a lot of people who necessarily, like for real, I like want to work for themselves. Like that's what they do. You know, and that's something I have to change for me, for myself, right? I need to be around more entrepreneurs. That that is a thing that I need because I need to hear one that I'm not losing my mind, right? And that like these things are the things that I'm feeling aren't as aren't as crazy as I make them. To, I make them out to be, right? And that the thing, the fears that I have are real, but I can deal with them and I can move forward. Um, the barriers that I perceive that as barriers that I can move forward and not um, be halted by them because sometimes our fear can be so consuming that it just allows you to do nothing. Like you just, you're just stuck in it and there's nothing else you can do. But I think reading books like this and just being around other people and having different experiences kind of gives you a little more support like, ooh, okay, so I can really do this and we can make things happen and I can get the support that I need. So, you know, if one of your upper limit problems is about, you know, fear of abandoning people, right? If you're, if, what does that mean? Who are you abandoning? It? And, and if you're moving into something different, who else will be on the other end of that, right? Can you find different people? Like if these people aren't fitting in your life in a way that's conducive to you living in your zone of genius, what does that mean? How do you shift that around? How do they have a different space as you move forward? And how do you keep, how do you not allow that to keep you from growing at all? You know, um, anyway, so yeah, that, that's the kind of thing that I was thinking about in reading this book. And I just, I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate even thinking about the idea of like um, having a zone of excellence, but necessarily not being a zone of genius. It makes me think about work all the time. I wasn't terrible, right, <laughs> at my job. That wasn't the case. I did really impactful things. I changed lives. I, be I believe that, not because I'm just like full of myself, but because the, the people who come back to me now, even young people that I worked with many, many years ago, many years ago, reach out to me because of the, because of the impact. And I don't think it's because I deserve some silver stars because I think the connection that we created and um, the things that I was uh, that I was allowed to provide space for them to grow within themselves. Like I think all of that stuff is beautiful and amazing and super impactful. Like I don't ever take that space for granted. I don't ever think I don't ever regret it. Um, I don't think that it was a waste of my time by any means. But is that my zone of genius? Right? Is that the thing that like keeps me up in excitement and things like that? And the answer is no. Right? At least not in that way. That's not, I, I believe firmly that I am intended to serve people. That is just something that I enjoy doing. I love taking care of people, nurturing them, supporting, um, being part of, you know, helping them meet their fullest potential. All of that stuff is incredibly important to me. And I think that's why um, for such a long time in my life, that's where I fit, right? Because that stuff is true, but it's not the full story. And I think sometimes we get so stuck in because we're in our zone of excellence and things do work, right? They're not terrible. Nobody's trying to get you to um, quit your job or, you know, you do have money and things are okay. Um, you do get some fulfillment from your, from your job or whatever you're doing outside. You get fulfillment from your relationships. Um, they're okay. Everything is okay. Everything is in, in some spaces is great, right? But I think overall, when we really think about who we are, what we want our lives to be, and what gives us that mo the most excitement, right? That 5 a.m., oh my God, I can't wait to just do more of this. When was the last time you felt that? You know, what brings that out in you? Where does that stuff come from? You know, and I think really examining that and leaning into that space and, you know, confronting your fears around it confronting the fact that you're like oh I just don't know if I can do this because 50 other people do this and I don't know if mine will be better right that's real but we have to deal with those things so we can push forward and get to that um, zone of genius space and I just I even love the language of that right 
who doesn't want to be in their zone of genius, right? It's just such a empowering, inciting, um, just powerful space to be in, to live your life that way and to not be afraid of it and not to be ashamed of it, you know, because I think there's so much shame, even like I said with them for myself, like there's so much um, shame that can come from leaving a traditional job and building because that that is the space I'm in, right? Essentially the building piece of the, the, the building process of making things happen. And I think it can be very, people can look at you like, oh, well, she's over there doing whatever. And I think that's where these ideas come from, have, making sure you're aware of your upper limit problems, making sure you're aware of your limitations so that when those things happen, you can be prepared, right? You can prepare yourself emotionally because so much of it is just internal. It's what's happening in your head. Nothing and nothing in real life is their opinions doesn't change if you're capable of doing something for it. That's just not how it works, right? That stuff is in you. So when you allow external things to stop you from what you have going on inside, that's where the, the issues come. But I think that's normal, of course, right? So I think the best way to shield ourselves and to protect ourselves from when those things do occur is to be prepared right? Again, writing down our upper limits, being prepared and understanding, okay, if I go into this space, they might have this opinion. If I go into over here, they might have this opinion, but I do not have to let their opinion be mine. I don't have to let that opinion impact how I live my life and what I want to do, you know, and being very clear about what you want and being very clear about, you know what, I have this goal, like I said, if I have that storefront, if that's what I want to do, it doesn't matter if it takes you however long, whatever that means, right? Because that's a whole nother upper limit problem where you have these ideas and these concepts about time. And like, if I'm not doing it this time, then I'm not good enough. And all that, that stuff is just not true. And I, I believe people around us, I believe media, I believe our, our own issues will allow us to believe that. And it's just not, it's just not, it's not, it's not, it's not true. Like I said, people who have um, worked with him, have all the money, right? Everything in the world. And people might think, well, well, they don't have any problems. They apparently are successful. But like, again, it depends on how you decide what you define as success. What is that person's zone of genius? Just because you make all this money doesn't mean that it's your zone of genius. And the flip is the same as well, right? Just because you're not rolling in a ton of money doesn't mean it's not your zone of genius. And that's okay. There's space for all of that. There's space for that to be true on both ends. But it's, it's, it's truly about having fulfillment within yourself, you know, and figuring out what makes you the most fulfilled and what, what do you want your life to be? You know, like I've mentioned before, like when you're 95 or however old we're going to be when we pass, you know, we all hope to have long, full lives, I, I would assume. But you know, in your last years, in your last times, whatever, what do you want to say about yourself? What kind of life do you want to look back and say that you had? What kinds of things do you want to be proud of? You know, if that's, if that's literally like having a family, you know, if that's your thing and it has nothing to do with like an actual job or whatever, if you feel like your zone of um, genius is like being at home with your children, all those kinds of things, whatever, and that stuff isn't happening, what kinds of barriers do you have or are you setting for yourself internally that are preventing you from having that you know like it doesn't all have to be about a job or whatever it could be about like I said relationships or um health goals it could be about or it can be about having a specific car living in a certain neighborhood whatever those things are a lot of times the barriers that keep us from having that stuff because it's stuff right it's things that we all have access to to some degree I'm not going to say um that it's all the same playing field for everybody because we all know that that's not necessarily true. But what I do believe is regardless of where you are on that playing field, we all can get to things that we want. I do believe that firmly. Um, I just think that sometimes people, some people have to maneuver a little bit differently. But anyway, um, figuring out what those things are for you and being okay with that. If that's the lifestyle that you want, then what is preventing you from having that? And a lot of times, even for, through reading this and like even the points that he made and thinking about things that I've experienced, I believe it's true that we get in our own ways because of what we believe. You know, and sometimes we self-sabotage before things can even become something else. Like you say you want this relationship, but you're sabotaging each one of them, but blaming everybody else. Well, <laughs> we need to address our own stuff, right? And really figure out what, what is the thing that is keeping me from living this life that I said that I want to live. 
you know, and taking this big leap as he talks about, right? What is keeping me from taking that big leap into this next step and really living in my zone of genius? You know, like what, what prevents me from doing that? And a lot of times, again, it's fear. And then you can write down whatever your reasons are, whatever your stuff is that keeps you from doing. Um, but yeah, the book is just really good, guys. I, I can't say enough. I'll probably read it again and again and again because it's really inspirational. And it also just, it's just realistic. And it holds me accountable to my own stuff and to my own behaviors. And, um, you know, and I think about my life in times where I've been the most in this zone of genius, right? When I talk about, like, even when I worked at Crate and Barrel, that was such a, I mean, life-changing time in my life. Like I was, like I said, I was in my, going into my last year or very much in my last year of grad school. I had just gone through a divorce or, or my divorce wasn't final, but I was going through it. Um, Willow was like going through this phase where she was doing all kinds of craziness. Um, I was really delving more into like spirituality and being connected. Um, I had just really, really, really gone vegan at that time. Like I was like committed and doing all of that stuff. Like there was, this was such a life-changing part of my life. And I would say kind of similar to what is happening at this point now that so many things are changing at one time, which for me, and again, not everybody functions the same. For me, that's always best. Like, I don't, I don't know why well, some of that could be childhood stuff as well, but who knows? But um, I always, things come up for me and I am able to maneuver better in those kinds of spaces. Like that is just when I, my body and my mind shifts the most when a lot of things are happening and I have to figure it out and come up with plans and do all the things. So anyway, like I said, it just made me think about that and reflect on that time in my life where I wasn't in that time. I wasn't afraid about of what somebody else thought I should be doing or whatever. I knew what I wanted. I knew that one, I wanted to finish school and graduate and I wanted to be in the space where I could be creative, period. No matter what that meant, right? I needed to be in the space where I was creative. And that's what I did, you know? Like I was selling all of these pieces on consignment during that time. It was, yeah, it was a good time, right? <laughs> And um, not to suggest that it's the last time that it will be good, but just in reflecting and thinking about the times where I've been at my most, like, whew, this is Antasia. This is me. Like, this is who I am. This is what I want to be doing. Um, it was during that time and it was incredible. Oh, it was incredible. But it just made me think about that and um, how I can just, what more can I do to constantly be in that space, right? How do I make sure that is, my life, right? How do I build that? And I'm very much in the space of doing that and I'm super proud of it and excited. And, you know, that's partially why I read different things and I try to absorb as much knowledge as possible. And I love to share it with people because I think it's important for us all to do that. I don't think there's um, only enough space for me, right? I, I believe that we all can do this. And I think that it looks different for everybody. Not everybody is going to get as much joy out of working at a certain place or doing certain things, but that is for me, my zone of genius. Like I just, I love it. I live for it. And to be able to do that and a little bit of like, oh, I get to help people too. And I get to do these things where I get to research. That is just how I function well. And the reality is that that job, so to speak, doesn't necessarily exist. So I have to make it, you know, I have to create that. And, and something about that is also exciting and exhilarating that I get to create my own path and I get to do my own thing, you know? And I just think that we all have the capacity to do that, whatever that is, right? I'm not saying everybody is gonna work for themselves and do that whole thing. That's not what I'm suggesting, but I, I believe that we all can live our own truth and really be in that and not be apologetic about it and not be fearful and have to explain ourselves to people because trust me I in this in this here time of my life I'm not explaining anything to anybody if you don't get it that's on you <laughs> like I, I got nothing for you because I don't have the capacity to bring people along either you're with me or then sit back and if we talk we talk if we don't we don't right and I think that can also be kind of again that leaving people behind, right? That abandonment thing. And that's one of the things I have to deal with that like, I cannot live my life based on what somebody else thinks I should and should be doing or, or the fear that they won't come with me. If you don't come with me, this journey is not for you. But I can't live my life small because you, you choose not to come with me. That's on you, right? If you don't see the vision, 
not my, not my problem, right? But these are also going to be the people, and oftentimes, people who are like, oh, y'all always believed in her. Oh, I knew she would. Okay, sure, right? So I think the point is, like, you have to do what is fulfilling for you and what gets you going and what is your zone of genius. If that is not having, again, because I know I'm only stressing money so much because I think people obsess so much about like, oh, I need to be rich. I need to this. I need to, and if I don't want that, then, you know, and we have to focus more on like internally, what am I getting? Because again, having all of that money does not create all of this happiness that people think it does. I, and I believe that only because, not because I have money, obviously, but because from what I see, hear and read, right? People are not just because they have money and all of a sudden they're happy people because they haven't dealt with the stuff. So what happens if you deal with the stuff first and then you get money, right? I think that, that change, that's life-changing. That's life-changing, I believe. I firmly believe that. And we can double back on this video in years when, <laughs> when I'm living a different life and see how I feel. But um, I just believe that's life changing, right? I think so much of our life and what's important because you can't take that stuff with you when you're on that deathbed. You're not like, oh yeah, go put my money in my, you know, that's not what it's about. It's about the experiences. It's about the love you shared. It's about the life that you built, you know, and that, that's not necessarily tied to stuff, you know, even though stuff is great, right? Stuff is exciting. I, of course, who doesn't want beautiful things or because I'm all about luxurious things I love the stuff you know but at the end of the day I also want to be well internally and I think that's more important um to have at the has have as the focus and I believe the more that is the focus then money does flow I do believe that as well I and I can attest to that because there have been times where I'm like whoo I don't know how we're going to manage this, but the more I take care of myself and I have a, a goal and I go towards things things work out for me period, <laughs> every single time. And I'm not just making that up. Like I figure things out every single time because I believe I will. And I know that I will, and I won't stop until I figure it out, right? So I believe if we have going through the world with that energy, but also while being true to ourselves, I, I think things just work out. I, I really do. So that is what I have today, guys. I'm super excited about this book, like I said. So I will link I will link everything down below for The Big Leap. And I hope that you guys listen to it. Like I said, there's an audio book as well, if I didn't mention that. There's an audio book. There's a physical book. I will say the audio book is... Um, his voice is a little dry, if I'm being honest, just a, just a, just a little dry, but um, I was able to get through it. So I, it's fine if, if, if you are okay with a little bit of dryness, but it's the content itself is really good. And I would suggest maybe even like taking notes while you listen to it and like coming back to stuff and, you know, seeing how it applies to you and figuring out what things are important to you and relevant for you. And like I said, I'll also link the, um, the sheet that, I don't know, because they're not labeled as anything. We're going to call it a worksheet. I don't know. And um, you guys can look at that so you can get more in-depth information around, about, around your upper limit problems, how to write them out, what to do with that stuff. And he has a full website, like the Hendricks Institute, I believe is what it's called. Um, he and his wife. So I'll link that too. So you guys can like browse the website and see what other things might spark something in you and maybe could encourage you to even look at different things. And if you guys have any other ideas or um, something that's similar to this, like similar to this book or similar to these kinds of ideas, I would love to hear about them. So if you want to share them here or even um, in our Facebook group, I think that would be beneficial for everybody. So yeah, that's what I have. And I hope you guys have a beautiful week and I will definitely see you guys next week. All right, bye. Thank you.